Hello everyone. In the previous video, uh, we had arrived at these equations, uh, which was uh, basically a governing equation for the kappa, a boundary condition, and a connection between the kappa and the applied load uh, or this uh, or this applied torque T. Uh, so, uh, in this video, we are going to look at a way of uh, possibly uh, solving for this uh, unknown kappa. Now, as a first step towards that, uh, what we'll say is that uh, suppose our uh, our alpha, suppose our alpha is zero, so the rate of twist is zero. And if the rate rate of twist is zero, then we are uh, sure that our W, the out of plane deflection, that is also going to be zero because if there is no twist there is certainly no uh, uh, no out of plane displacement so uh, it is somewhat as part of the kinematical hypothesis which i had touched upon very very briefly in the previous video what we can say is that alpha or, or w uh, that is proportional to alpha okay and the way that we are going to say that is that uh, this W we have already said that it was equal to this kappa out of plane deflection and what we are going to say is that this is just like some alpha times phi of xy and this phi uh, let me write that down in the proper place so W is equal to kappa xy and that is equal to alpha phi comma xy and this phi is what is referred to as the warping function so what good does it do us well uh, let's see in terms of the equations that we had arrived at uh, in the previous video so first of all uh, let us take a look at this let me just copy it here So first simplification of course is that this L cancels with this L so that uh, what I'll be uh, obtaining is G integration A alpha x square plus y square and please note that this kappa now can be written as this alpha phi and that alpha is certainly independent of y. In a similar fashion this kappa can be represented as alpha phi and that alpha is also independent of x so that alpha can come out of this delta x this alpha can come out of this delta del y uh, so uh, what we'll have is this alpha x del phi del y minus y del phi del x Sorry about that. And this thing, of course, is uh, like this. Let me separate that out. And please note that within this, uh, so this alpha is uh, present within this integration now with respect to this A. Uh, and we have this equal to t over here but this alpha is completely independent of x and y so it might as well come out of this integration so what we'll have is t e is equal to g alpha j where you please note that this j is just a placeholder for this entire integration alpha x square plus y square plus alpha whatever it was present okay
now next we have this equation basically this one and that is just the laplacian of uh, kappa and again this kappa can be represented as alpha phi this kappa can be represented as alpha phi and alpha being independent of x and y they can come out of these derivatives so overall what we'll just end up with uh, is this that uh, this del square kappa del x square plus del square kappa del y square is equal to zero that is just going to give us del square phi del x square plus del square phi del y square that's all there is to it okay so this is simply the laplacian of phi next for this equation let's see what it gives us uh, i'll just copy this thing So this is going to give me um, so this kappa can be replaced, uh, replaced by alpha phi and uh, we'll have this alpha coming out so minus y plus del phi del x nx plus alpha x plus del phi del y and y is equal to zero so on the boundary of the cross section okay and you please note that this alpha can very much be cancelled out okay so basically what we are arriving at is this equation this equation and this equation okay so these are the three things so let me just highlight them these boxed equations are the one that I am really concerned with ok so if you can solve these things simultaneously uh, will be done and therein lies a little bit of an issue but let me not uh, let me not uh, uh, talk about issues rather I'll just first of all deal with a very simple case okay see our our goal here is to solve these things simultaneously okay now uh, let us consider the simplest of situations okay without uh, thinking too much about the formalism of solving these equations or the method of solving these equations just think about it very very uh, in, a, in a very simple manner suppose we consider that as a solution for this uh, for this system of equations we have phi equal to c see uh, what is happening here is that we don't know what phi is because if we know phi then our job is done okay so let us just test what happens if as a very very special case as the simplest of cases what happens if we take this phi as constant okay so let us test this out so this is like the simplest of examples okay simple simplest case phi is equal to constant well one good thing is that if we do consider phi as constant then this uh, governing equation that we have the Laplacian of phi that gets automatically satisfied there is no doubt about it okay you replace phi by some constant here the del square del x square of that constant is zero Similarly, the del square del y square of that constant is zero. So, uh, all considerations apart, at least this governing differential equation that is nicely satisfied. No problem there. Next, let us see what happens to this boundary condition. Okay. Uh, so, uh, 
so uh, one thing is for sure is that if you take this phi to be a constant then del phi del x is going to be zero similarly this term del phi del y is going to be zero so what we'll end up with is this minus y nx plus x and y let's do that minus y nx plus x and y all right we have this on the boundary okay now what can we do well we can just refer to what we had already arrived for this nx and ny uh, back in our chapter on classical plate theory because there also we were considering a certain uh, contour or a certain periphery and here also we are considering the same periphery so whether it's a plate or a certain cross section uh, in terms of the geometry and the representation in, uh, in terms of the different variables it really doesn't matter so nx if you can recall nx is uh, dy ds and ny is equal to minus dx ds okay so i strongly urge you to refer to that uh, particular video and uh, i'll try to put a link to that video in the description below okay so if we substitute this we have this and we have this all good now this thing is uh, we can write this as uh, so we have a minus here we have a minus here so this is uh, uh, we can rewrite this as dds of x square plus y square and if you want you can put a half over here okay so if you do the differentiation over here you will see that you will get back these terms these two terms okay well what is this telling us please do not forget that we have this in very important statement present that this equation that we are writing these are true for uh, for the boundary okay so on the boundary it's always there now we have this thing that dds of this x square plus y square is equal to zero on the boundary so is it not true that x square plus y square is equal to some constant again on the boundary it must be true But what is that thing x square plus y square is equal to constant what is that thing that is nothing but so we have to conclude that the boundary is nothing but a circle well that's certainly very nice okay because it's nice because uh, we are dealing with torsion and the simplest of cases that we have considered phi is equal to constant that is uh, uh, giving us the situation back when uh, uh, back from our undergraduate mechanics of solids classes that uh, this is effectively the case of the torsion but let us not forget that we have another equation also so let's see what happens to it we have t is equal to g alpha j where this j is like this okay so let me just uh, uh, so i can also simplify this again uh, you see this uh, again this phi is a constant so this term is going to disappear this term is also going to disappear and i'm going to let uh, going to be left with uh, uh, by the way i think I, I made a mistake here of writing this alpha again this should not be present this alpha should not be present because i have already taken this alpha out okay sorry about that uh, anyway so i have this uh, j but what should have been present here is the i think i think i'm i'm fine all right so uh, I, i'm i'm just uh, going to write this as j is equal to integration x square plus y square and this integration was over the entire domain okay 
and what is this this is nothing but the very familiar from our again from our undergraduate uh, classes this is the familiar polar moment of inertia okay from ug classes so we are getting back all the familiar things now so what we are actually getting here is that g t is equal to g alpha j this thing and this alpha is this t by g j so this rate of twist or the twist per unit length that is uh, uh, that we are getting as t by g j and again this is something which is familiar to us and finally uh, you can note that uh, so this equation uh, it can give me uh, beta by l because please note that we have already said that beta is equal to alpha l considering the entire length that's like that so beta is equal to tl by gj and this again is something very 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 familiar to us uh, we have all come across this formula in our first year uh, or maybe in our undergraduate mechanics of solids classes in our study of torsion that the angle of twist that is actually given by this torsion times the total length divided by gj okay and this particular combination gj that is referred to as the torsional rigidity so it's all very nice here that uh, by considering this by uh, the simplest of cases for phi we are able to recover uh, all these familiar things with regards to the circle okay furthermore if we consider slightly more complicated case okay suppose we consider something like uh, phi is equal to uh, axy you will see and i encourage you to do this uh, yourself uh, you will find that this is uh, for a for an ellipse phi is equal to a times y cube minus 3x square this is for an equilateral triangle Now, even though it may, uh, all these things uh, may, may seem apparently good, but I believe uh, that, I mean, by considering these kinds of phi's, uh, you are able to recover these geometries or the cases associated with these geometries. But I really do believe uh, that even though you may be happy with these things, uh, apparently happy and especially uh, with this case where we are considering the circle uh, or we are obtaining the circle uh, circle uh, circular cross section uh, so even though you may be apparently happy uh, i believe that somewhere in some corner of your brain there may be a little bit of an unhappiness lurking okay it's like a splinter in your brain so Whenever you have a situation like that, that something at the back of your brain, somewhere in some braces, it is, uh, it is kind of bothering you, I, I strongly encourage you to, to completely and very explicitly acknowledge that, uh, that, that, that little source of unhappiness. Okay, do not try to hide it. Okay, because only when you acknowledge that source of unhappiness, uh, will you be able to address that happiness uh, that unhappiness and then possibly uh, be able to overcome it if you just sweep it under the carpet or maybe just hide it back into some recess of your brain you'll never be able to overcome it okay so even though we have an apparent happiness over here in order to gain true happiness we have to acknowledge uh, 
the source of that unhappiness the source of that unhappiness is like this or here okay uh, you see we have these governing equations okay we have these equations for phi but we are not really solving for phi given a certain geometry rather what we are doing and this is this is really acknowledging very explicitly the source of our unhappiness is that we are taking different uh, cases for this phi and then kind of very coincidentally or fortunately arriving at this circular case or this elliptical case as I have given the expressions here or the equilateral triangle case but would it not be better perhaps much much better actually if we had some kind of a method to directly address a given geometry instead of doing this kind of a guesswork with the solution for the warping function okay that would have been much better i am sure most of you will agree with me so you uh, someone gives you a geometry you proceed systematically with that geometry without guessing uh, beforehand the solution for this phi and then systematically obtain the solution for this phi that would have been much better i believe okay so that uh, so there is a method for doing that uh, and uh, that was first given to us uh, by uh, ludwig prantl and this is the same prantl who uh, who has given us the famous boundary layer theory and fluid mechanics also all right so on that note i will end this video and continue with what is referred to as the prantl stress function in the next video uh, all right thank you very much